All right. And then there was one. We're down to one last album that I think I start us off with with a take. But Mm -hmm. as Mm -hmm. always, we need some numbers, Matt. So we have uh, My Aim is True by Elvis Costello. Comes in at 107 in the 1970s, just missing our uh, proper episodes. Number 13 in 1977. Number 440 of all time. And it's Elvis Costello's second highest rated album behind... Uh, 1978's This Year's Model, which we will be covering in a mm-hmm. proper episode. Yep. but And in Rolling Stone's list, this comes in at number 430 of all time. So I had a revelation, guys. And mm-hmm. it's funny how sometimes things line up that you never would have connected until you do a podcast where you cover a whole shit ton of albums. Mm-hmm. Here's what I realized. I realized that Elvis Costello is my Billy Joel. Oh, my God. I he... wrote that down on... My notes. <laughs> he writes the same songs as Billy Joel in terms of themes, yes. but all of his songs speak to me and I love them. And I'm like, this is what it's like bizarro world. Billy Joel. It's like he writes the same thing, but whatever it is, it just speaks to me in a way that Billy Joel never does. I don't think I That's ever funny. would have put that together unless we had covered The Stranger last week. And mm-hmm. obviously, I'm not alone because apparently Josh got there as well. <laughs> I but have that's... a Billy Joel comment as well, so let's make that a trifecta. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, so yep. I think the proximity of that album <laughs> yeah, <definitely>. is <laughs> just what did it. And it's the same themes about love and, um, you know, there's a nostalgia element and all of it, but it's tied there's melody as we talked there's all yes. kinds of melody and going to it uh except instead of a piano elvis costello is doing it with guitar right that's the, yep. the difference but whereas billy joel's is a really sentimental take on it i think elvis costello's feels like it's it's from 1977 so take contemporary with a grain of saw but it feels like a contemporary version on it that Mm -hmm. just feels more lived in and authentic to me Mm -hmm. and there's my initial take on this album i think there are just really well constructed pop songs up and down this album i think that the lyrics are a really interesting thing where they're not it's a real important lane that he's in in that It would be really easy to overwrite the type of lyrics that he's writing and really easy to be schmaltzy with the lyrics he's writing, and he's neither. He manages Mm -hmm. to find a needle between where he's plain spoken, clever enough to be clever, but not too clever to be, you know, too cute by half, kind of, the old saying. Um, And he varies his sonic palette on songs Mm -hmm. you know less than zero sounds different than sneaky feelings a song i really liked which sounds different than you know welcome to the working week which is this short song to start off the album um of course allison is like a superpower ballad type a a new wave power ballad i guess is how you describe that um yeah i mean i know this album so it it was not a surprise to me I'm, i'm familiar with elvis costello's work i've listened to it but never in a million years did I make that connection to Billy Joel until after we listened to yeah. it. And that was what I immediately said. I said, wow. He, I, and then I thought to myself, how do they both exist? And Elvis Costello is sort of like more of a niche act and Billy Joel yeah. sells 70 million albums. It doesn't make any sense. As to, And, you know, you can throw Elton John in in terms of you know, writing the same kind of... But, but Elton John also is more grandiose kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think... You know, that's, yeah. So anyway, hmm. there's my initial take. And I, I thought it was this novel take that was going to be profound, but apparently it isn't so much because <laughs> well, you guys yeah. got there too. So, so I, I've i I've known this album, for, I've had this album for many years. So I, it's one of the rare um, cold listens that we do that I, it's it's not a cold listen. It's just a re-listen yeah. really. And um, I've always liked this record. And I think my brother's actually said that this is one of his favorite debut albums of all time. That this is, and it's, it's a really strong debut album, um, you know, and, uh, I think, um, I think, yeah, I think m- melodically, song structure wise, you know, the songs are certainly here. And um, I've always liked Elvis Costello's voice. He's kind of got this. He's 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 got a, a somewhat of a unique voice. It's got a little bit of attitudes. There's a punk element to it, but it's also really couched in, you know, some some softer, more melodic tunes. Um, and uh, 
you know, so I've always liked that about him. Uh, no Dancing's got like, he's got like a lot of kind of like 50s kind of elements to his songs too. Definitely. No Dancing's got this like Phil Spector wall of sound opening to it. So the production's mm-hmm. certainly in line with that. Um, there's garage rock elements of this, you know, like Miracle Man's kind of like, yeah, like kind of more of a stripped down. A lot of this is kind of a stripped down type of rock, um, you know, garage rock. Uh, not really distorted guitars though. The guitar playing is always kind of like this crisp, you know, it kind of has a, like a crisper uh, uh, a tone to it. So, uh, Allison, man, that song, I've known that. That might be one of the first pop slash rock songs I can ever remember knowing because um, my uncle's used, my sister's name is Allison. And I just remember my my uncle singing that, like at, from a very young age and, and, and playing that song. So that's, you know, I, I, always, I always throw that together with um, Neil Diamond and probably Rick Springfield is some of my first like <laughs> musical memories. That's my that's my trifecta right there. You want so, a little, little... Uh, tri- tidbit on this, by the way? Yeah. That I thought was interesting. The backing band for Elvis Costello on this is the band Clover. Okay, that's who's backing mm-hmm. him. Not Do the attractions. You know, uh, right, so it's not the attractions, actually. The attractions okay. are not on this album, believe it okay. or not. Yeah, they actually specifically mentioned that. Uh, Clover's the backing band. Do you know, absent here, who the normal lead singer of Clover is? Hmm. No. I feel like it's on the tip of my tongue. But Billy Joel, <laughs> Huey Lewis. Oh. Huey Lewis. Oh. It makes sense when you think wow. about it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I could yeah. see that. It yes. does. I mean, it makes yeah. sense. Um, yeah. So yeah, I just thought I'd share that. So yeah, yeah. Some of these songs, it's like that's the thing, and that's kind of where my Billy Joel comment comes in a little bit. But I mean, this somebody's got this like bouncy feeling to it. I I put Billy Joel down because I felt sneaky feelings. I was listening to that song in particular, and that to me seemed like a a very similar. A song style that of a Billy Joel mm-hmm. song done differently, right? Because it's not as piano driven, but um, but that was the song that stood out to me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say John that I got this revelation throughout the whole album that I was feeling that way, but there was something about that song that stuck out that that was where I got that Billy Joel quality from. Um, I've always loved "Angels Want to Wear My Red Shoes." That might be my favorite song of the record. Um, that's just a really a lot of upbeats. It's a fun album. That's that's what yeah. this is. It's a catchy, upbeat, fun album. With some, it's got some melody, uh, uh, slower stuff in here as well, but it's got '50s stuff. Um, you know, mystery dance is kind of like a '50s rock song, almost like a Chuck Berry, Jerry Lee Lewis type of sound, but it's and it's sped up. Um, so, and a lot of the stuff is just really just great rock and roll. So, uh, I, I am a fan of this. This is. I don't know a ton of Elvis Costello stuff. This is easily the 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 the, the, the stuff that I'm most familiar with. Um, so I'm interested to cover you know to cover the next album that's supposedly better than this or ranked higher. So, um, but you know, I, I I've always liked him, and you know, I probably should know more of his stuff as well. Um, oh, and watching the detectives, I think technically I'm not sure that that was part of the original release. I think that that was a single that might have been tacked on later on. But if you guys listen to that, or you know, if, if anybody's listened, I did not. Listen yeah, if it. anybody listens to this record, I, I you know throw that on at the end. That's that's a definite. Josh, you would like it. That's like his reggae. It's like mm-hmm. a reggae song for him. Um, and it's nice. it's 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 it definitely stands out. It's different um than most of the other songs on this, but it's still excellent. So um, big fan of this. Thumbs up. Great great album. Yes, this is a um a shockingly good debut album. In fact, I had to look it up. I had heard this album before, but it's been a very long time, and I. I really enjoyed listening to it again. My exact uh, note was, this is a better version of what Billy Joel is trying to accomplish. Damn, wow. <laughs> That's the <exact> quote. Nice. <laughs> and so uh, I, I did get that feeling throughout, uh, but I this album is head and shoulders um, better than than the Billy Joel album, and and I really liked it. It's my also my pick of of the albums this week. This was my favorite. Um, I just really like his. It's amazing how kind of fully formed his his music and what he's trying to accomplish is right from the get go. This is kind of I feel like there is a through line from and uh, from the rest of his music, but again, I haven't heard as much as. Um, also of his music so i'm interested to hear the next album as well i I really like his mix he he seems to mix like motown or take elements of motown and doo-wop and and these old and rockabilly and like meld them together in a really fun way his guitar is really on point um he is a very good guitarist i think maybe underappreciated in that respect and um and and like john said his lyrics are are uh just better than billy joel's and or his songs are better um 
uh, written and I just enjoy the sounds of his uh, of his music more he has uh, a catch a way to write catchy melodies and that feel fresh while also kind of drawing back or hearkening to these other things so you can you kind of get this almost nostalgia feeling when listening to the album but it's in a new kind of a new spin on on things if that makes sense and yeah I I thought this was strong throughout and Mm -hmm. and the songs are really just upbeat and and fun to dance to as well yeah did we mention um uh, a couple. I don't know. Did we mention uh, watching the detectives? Did you guys mention that yeah, song? I, yeah, I, I mentioned that, was, that was the song, song that, that was tacked on. Yeah, that's yes, an awesome song. Yeah, that's arguably my favorite song on this. Um, hmm. I two other songs we didn't mention that I I liked a lot on this were "Waiting for the End of the World" was a song I liked, mm-hmm. and then uh, "Blame It on Blame Kane, it on Kane. Yep. is a really good song too. So um, yeah, I just it's really good. I'd be remiss if. I also always hold a, a soft spot for Elvis Costello. He's very much a part of the narrative of Two Tone Ska as mm-hmm. well, which holds a, a soft spot in my heart, big time, more than a soft spot, big time. So I always appreciate that Elvis Costello is a part of that as well because he was kind of at the forefront of a lot of different stuff. Hmm. Uh, yeah, strong recommendation. Like Did it. you guys? I, I that was one of the notes I I forgot to mention initially. Um, I I found a lot of these songs that the bass and the drums were kind of put up front. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's in in the mix. I I felt that they were. I mean, not to the degree what the Who was doing, because it's not like they were playing as loudly as those guys were. But it's definitely it it, it seemed to me that that must have been somewhat of a calculated decision to kind of mm-hmm. put those a little bit more up front in the in the mix. Um. And I'm not sure if it was throughout, but I definitely noticed it throughout several songs that that was that those were prominent features of of, of a lot it's of these songs. Got like that, like um, the, I know Elvis Costello is often like lumped in with punk, which is an mm-hmm. interesting deal because nothing about him sonically sounds like punk. Right. Um, I guess it's a little bit of the vibe sort of where he's coming from. Um, it's always been a weird fit for me a little bit in there um outside i wonder if like he came along in 1974 or 1983 if that would still be there um I, you know it's i i know a guy you like matt like um frank turner right like that mm-hmm. what is that like that um that like pub rocky type saw uh, what is yep. it, like, gaelic rock or pub rock there's a, the elements of that too like i said it's always hard for me to um Part of the reason I couldn't remember that Elvis Costello was British is because he sings with an American accent. He's like the opposite of like the people that try to sing British, right? Like he's not he's, doing. Oh, I, I. It's, right. It's he's not, trying to. He's actually basically going out of his way to make things sound American at times. Yeah, it's, but John, remember yeah. we, he is American. We looked that up. No, so he is American. Okay, I, I'm always confused. So he is American. I, I thought British. he was. No, no. I think he's, he's British. I he's I was British. confused because he's British, but he <laughs> you sings. said he was a. Yeah, so I, guys... yeah, I always forget that he's British because oh, he, okay. do, he doesn't sing with a British accent. He sings with an American accent, which is always what throws me off with Elvis Costello. So, gotcha. like, yes, yeah. okay, yes, he was born in in England. Yeah. So okay. remember, I said My that mistake. I'm like I can't remember if he's English or Brit- so. You just made the same mistake I did that yeah. one time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And from then, Paddington, yeah. England, Josh. Paddington, okay. England. Like so the there's bear. a little bit of where those roots come from. You know, that sort of pub rocky sound. Yeah. Like um, other, you know, we said Frank Turner, but like the Pogues are another example of that sound. Mm-hmm. Um, they have an album that I'll shout out called Not pub Just Rock. A... I've never heard that, but I know what you're talking about. <clears throat> yeah, it's um, they have a great album, um, both in title and sonically, called Rum Sodomy and the Lash, the Pogues, yeah. that is worth a listen. Yeah, so that's worth checking out. But um, yeah, that it's that similar type sound, that pub rock sound. Yeah, you know, and and <laughs> it's kind of also to some degree like Chumbawamba. It you know, sound like this <laughs> too. You know, that same idea. Yeah, yeah. not as much but anarchy. Now but... <laughs> Elvis Costello is writing much much better songs than that and nuanced. But yeah, it's that same tradition a little bit sonically at times. So yeah. So there we go. No, Any I mean, final yeah, thoughts? No, I'm just interested to hear the uh, to do the bio on him. I think I think I'm covering Elvis Costello because that album this year's model came out in '78. Um, Let's look it up. So I don't know how many episodes we've got uh, until we cover that, but I think I think I'm covering him. 
Yes, I will you weave are. him in. I will weave him into the story of the specials when we cover them too, because he's a piece of that story. Hey, yeah. and maybe maybe I will like more ska than I thought because I do like this a lot. You know, I mm-hmm. and if and if, I, if my ska is going to sound like this, I think I'd be okay with with two tone ska is going to be really interesting for you, Matt, because I think you I think it's going to sound one way and mm-hmm. it's going to sound different than you. I'm not going to say that you're going to like it. Like, I'm not going anywhere near that far. I just yeah. think that what you think you're going to hear and what you're going to hear are going to be slightly different. So okay. I'm not going to tease it any more than that. And, you know, right. we'll, we'll I will see be open minded, John. Mm-hmm. I, that's, I know that, is my, that is my CTS pledge. And I will not yell at you. If, and I will not yell at you if you don't like it. So, uh, but I will expand on why I like it. So, okay. yeah. 